Hey guys, thanks for tuning in for another Niagara Broadsword Academy Tuesday Night Lessons. Today we're going to work over a couple of tips for beginners, just some basic things that you can watch out for. So for our basic tips that you can watch out for as a beginner, we're going to start off with the footwork. Okay? So instead of going over the particulars of how this footwork uh, uh, is going to work, we're going to focus on some minor mistakes that people make uh, that can potentially be dangerous. So what I'm going to show you here is uh, we're in second position and uh, we're stepping forward into third or stepping forward into a lunge and you often see people turn the foot in like this and put their weight against the foot in this way. This is very dangerous, it's a very bad idea. Make sure you're not doing this. When you're stepping down, your weight should go forward across your foot to your toes and then back to your heel. Forward to your toes and back to your heel. Make sure that big toe is taking uh, a, a big portion of your weight. Right? So make sure you're not turning your foot in in any way. Okay, we'll show you this way so you can see, and just pay very close attention to your footwork as you lunge in and make sure that you don't turn your foot up in this way, uh, or you don't turn your foot in as you're stepping in this way. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 This way. And I'm exaggerating a little bit so you can see. Instead, we want to take the foot and roll it down from the heel to the toes, and back to the heel, heel to the toes, and back to the heel. Make sure to focus on the sensations in your foot and make sure that the weight is being carried across your foot and back, just like that. And that's how we're going to move our weight forward and backward on that front foot. And we're not going to roll that ankle. So that's the first tip for beginners. Just make sure that when you're stepping forward into a third position or a lunge or any position, that you're not clipping that foot in and rolling the ankle. Next, keeping with our footwork, we're going to make sure that our lunges are uh, done both quickly and safely. So when we step out into a deep lunge, uh, if you want to extend that back leg, get that lean forward, and get going as far forward as you can, that's great. Uh, as a beginner, you can get started on that. We've already talked about the position of the foot, but now we're going to talk about retreating from here. Okay, so you've got all your way forward. What we don't want to see is pushing off the toes like this. Don't hoist yourself up or push off your toes to get up from a lunge. Instead, we're going to drop that back knee and we're going to roll out off the heel. Okay? So you're going to drop the back knee, roll off the heel. There we are. Let's go back into a nice deep lunge. Make it deep if you like. There we go. And we're going to break that back knee, roll off the heel. And that's how we're going to get up from a lunge. Let's see it forward now. Okay? So here we are. We're leaning up nice far forward. And we're going to break that back knee and we're going to kick the heel. Okay? And that's how we're going to get up from our lunge. And that will ensure that the largest muscles in the body are the ones that are picking your body up instead of the tiny muscles uh, for your ankle. Okay? So there we are for uh, getting up from the lunge. All right, moving quickly along to the sword arm, we're going to talk uh, for a moment about best practices with the sword arm. Now, to make things a little clearer for you, I'm going to come forward. I'm going to show you the two hand positions. So one hand position we have, your hand goes inside and your knuckles are in line with the uh, handle of the blade. So this is the first position, we call it hammer position commonly. Okay, and the other position where your knuckles are not in line is like this, it's a handshake grip uh, and that's what we call the handshake grip on the inside. So these are your two grips. Now, the reason why I bring those up is they uh, are going to make a difference in the safety and the use of your weapon. You can see that when I'm trying to extend my blade forward, my arm is not in line. In order to keep the force of the attack in line with the blade, I will have to disalign my, my uh, knuckles with the blade, right? So we have a handshake grip here. Now, when I turn the sword up into a defensive position, like an inside guard or an outside guard, you can see here on the inside guard, then in order to make the force perpendicular to my arm, that's going to be the hammer grip. Okay, so that means that when the force comes into the blade, it runs along my arm, whereas when I cut or thrust, the force going along the blade is, uh, is projected straight from my arm. Okay, so those two positions are how you decide whether or not you're using the hammer grip or the uh, handshake grip. And that's based on whether you're expecting the force to come laterally across the blade below the weight of the blade, or if you're like you're trying to project the force down the blade out 
to the end of the blade. Okay, so those are your two basic hand positions. Uh, and when you get started, the, base, the easiest way to keep them in mind is always guard in hammer grip and always cut and thrust in handshake grip. And that's the easiest way to keep them straightforward. Now we're going to deal with another issue that comes up with the uh, sword arm. So here we are in a uh, guard. Any guard, it doesn't matter. I've chosen the inside guard in this case. And we're making a cut. Now this is about the elbow. Okay, when you're making a cut, either horizontally or vertically in any direction, you don't want to extend the elbow all the way out like this until it stops itself through its own force. Okay, this jarring motion is not what you want. Instead, when we bring the sword down, we want to leave a tiny bit of slack in the elbow as it comes down. So even as we reach our maximum here, there's a tiny bit of slack in the elbow there, and that keeps our elbow from hyperextending as we're coming down. It keeps sword arm or tennis elbow from developing. So this is what you want to do on both sides. Make sure that there's slack in the elbow. It's hard to see on this angle, but my elbow is not completely straight. There's a little bit of give there. And that's how you can measure it a little bit. As you come down slowly to the fullest extent of your cut, make sure your elbow has a little bit of play in it. Okay? So that's what you're going to do as you're coming down. As you're going up, same thing. We don't want to fully extend the elbow and then drive it up because if we get any resistance, then that will be very bad for our elbow. Uh, and same with the other way. We cut to here. We don't cut all the way out because of that uh, tennis elbow effect. Okay? So that's, uh, that's taking care of our elbow. Now, I will note that the, the, more, uh, the more broken your elbow is, the shorter your cut is going to be, right? So if you cut from here, which is really awkward, but it's just for demonstration, if you're cutting from here, you don't have the length that you need. So you do want it as extended as you can without fully extending the elbow, okay? So when you get uh, more advanced, you'll make a cut like this that appears as though the elbow is fully extended or nearly fully extended, uh, like in this position, but I've actually got a tiny amount of play still left in the elbow there. So uh, that's what you want. You want to tighten that up to be as small as possible, but you want to make sure that it's there because it will prevent your elbow from being uh, damaged over time or in one uh, particularly uh, painful event. So uh, there you go. Prevent sore elbow. Uh, make sure you got a little bit of room in there. What do we do with our left hand? A common question that we get uh, from beginner students is, what am I supposed to be doing with my off hand? Uh, your lefty, that's your right hand. And if you're righty, that's your left hand. What am I doing with the hand that isn't holding the sword? Uh, as a beginner, what we teach in Niagara Broad Sword Academy, just put that thing on your uh, hip and forget about it. Okay. So at the beginning, we're just going to put it there, and we're going to work through our regimental footwork. We're going to work through our six guards and cuts. Uh, and we're going to work through our six guards. Uh, six guards and six cuts. Yeah. So we're going to work through the basics on you, and we're not going to get too worried about what that left hand is doing while we're working on those basics. When you get into more advanced work, uh, you can start engaging that left arm. But to begin with, you're going to just leave it on your hip. Uh, you're going to leave it there so that you know where it is. Uh, it's also okay if you dangle it or if you just you know, put it somewhere that it always is going to be if you got to tuck it in. Sometimes uh, beginners will have it in a dangerous place though. So that's what, that's what I want to warn you about specifically is putting your left hand here while you're fighting. This is a bad place for it because someone can just hit, right? So the reason we say put it on your hip is so that it's out of the way. You can also put it behind your back. You can dangle it behind you wherever you want it to be. Uh, to be inert, just make sure it has a place to be, uh, so that we can kind of forget about it. Later on, uh, we're going to teach you about using it to uh, help with your uh, help with your stances and to help with the uh, the motions that you're using. We're also going to talk about using it to engage the opponent and possibly using a secondary weapon, uh, a targe, uh, or something else like that. So your left hand will be doing stuff, uh, but for now, we're just going to keep it uh, keep it at the side. And the very last thing that I want to talk about is uh, your posture and the alignment of your stance. Okay, so from the side, here's some common posture problems that I just want you to think about in yourself. Number one, don't slouch forward. 
this is a this is a posture that you may have adopted from another fighting system, or it might just be a bad posture that you've adopted for no reason. Don't do it. Uh, here at Niagara Broadsword Academy, we encourage you to stand with a uh, line basically from your thigh here, straight up your body, uh, and that's the position that you'll be standing in uh, almost all the time, even in a third position. This is where we'd like you to be as a beginner. Uh, so keep your body nice and straight, and don't hunch your shoulders, uh, don't sit with your gut forward, um, and don't, uh, don't lean your whole body forward, okay? So straight up and down. Uh, nice and clear like that. Now from this side, what you got to watch out for is the back shoulder, okay? So this is most common what we see in people um, who are starting up, and they will also simultaneously complain that they find this back foot to be awkward. They find it to be in a weird spot, they find it to be uncomfortable. Well, when your shoulders are disaligned from your hips, you're going to find that to be weird. It's either going to stress your back, or it's going to stress your knee as you're turned in this way. So what we're telling you, fix your problem with your leg, is to roll that shoulder back, okay? So you want your feet to be in line, you want your hips to be going this way, and you want your shoulders as well to be going this way. We don't want that back shoulder peeking out, we don't want that hand peeking out, right? We want to keep in line as much as possible. And uh, this is the correct stance to be taking as a beginner, nice regimental stance. You want your, uh, your lines to be straight this way, and you want your lines to be straight this way as well, okay? So there's your beginner stance. Just a couple of things to watch out for. Slouching, shoulders, leaning, and of course, that back shoulder creeping forward, okay? Here's a good, correct posture. Grab yourself a camera if you'd like. Take a couple of pictures and see where you're at. You can see that my hand is over here. This is a bad habit I've developed. Don't develop that bad habit. Uh, so uh, this is where your posture should be at. And that's all we've got for a couple of beginner tips for you guys who are getting into a broadsword, or if you're getting into any other um, martial arts uh, involving swords, uh, this might be helpful to you. Also, if you're uh, dipping into sword play for other reasons, uh, stage acting or LARP or anything like that, you might find that these will make your sword play more effective, and uh, it'll definitely look better and look much more professional. So, uh, and a little bit of safety too, you've got to watch out for some of those pitfalls of safety. So these are our basic uh, beginner tips for people uh, who've got a sword in one hand. Uh, thanks for joining us for Night Broadsword Academy's Tuesday night lessons, and uh, we'll see you on Thursday.